Here in part four of the series, we'll look at firing rate, temp limits, external, and miscellaneous. We'll start with firing rate. This is for combustion setup. We can get in and uh, in this example, this is for a Magnatherm 5 to 1. Uh, you want to do a combustion setup, you can choose minimum um, or maximum, and that'll modulate the boiler to 100% or 20% in this example. So now that I've chosen maximum and I clicked OK, the modulation of the boiler would go right to 100%. Uh, minimum fire on this product, once I choose that, will modulate down to low fire. And again, a 5 to 1 magnetherm is going to modulate down to 20%. Uh, on the other type products that you'll see, the HTD, the fire tube, commercial fire tube, you'll actually have fan speeds and they'll give you a range on the fan speeds. And let me show you a quick sample of that. Here you could choose fan speeds for your minimum or your maximum or 50%, etc. Now let me go back to the 5 to 1 and under timeout, this is in seconds. So if you forget and you leave something set up on, on fan speed and you walk away from the job, it, the timeout will actually go back to normal operation. And you could also enable or disable a boiler. Uh, you can also do it in manual or pilot test if that product actually has a pilot such as the Magnatherm products. Next we'll talk about is our temperature limits. Temperature limits, these are the built-in high limits for a boiler. And you have auto reset, so we have built in the boiler as an auto reset limit or a manual reset limit. The auto reset, if I reached in this example 195 degrees, it would shut the boiler down. However, it would reset. Uh, based on its delta T or, or the differential. An example of this is 5 degrees. So if I reached 195 degrees, the burner would shut off. At 190 degrees, it would allow it to refire. I would spread that out at least 10 degrees. So that's an auto limit. A manual high limit is obviously, if I reach 200 degrees, it's going to shut the boiler down and will not allow it to refire. Um, so if you need to test Limits, uh, if an inspector is on a job, this is where you could come in and uh, hypothetically my boiler is running at 160 degrees, I could type in 150, once I click enter, the boiler would lock out. Uh, that way you can prove to the inspector the limits do work. However, don't forget to go back in and put that back up um, so you don't keep tripping limit. The delta T parameters are here. You can enable or disable for the delta T minimum um, or the delta T maximum. The max we would ever allow is 70. That's on this product, okay? Which again, this is a Magnatherm 5 to 1. So here on the screen, we're showing the 0 to 70 degree maximum delta T. In my example, I'll choose 40 degrees for the maximum delta T. Next, we'll talk about external controls. However, before we talk about the navigation, there are <clears throat> pins, jumpers, that have to be in the correct position on the circuit board. Now, this slide came from our manual. Um, so you would choose example on pin number CN21. And if you're choosing a 4 to 20 milliamp output, analog output, you want your jumpers on pins 1 and 2. However, if you wanted 0 to 10 output, your jumpers would go on pins four and five. Here are the inputs, pin number CN20, if you chose four to 20, that's the position of your jumper, or if you chose zero to 10 volt DC, this is the position of the jumper in vertical position. Now, I also want to bring up, depending on the product, the example, um, Kennett might have this control board installed horizontally, and this would be the positions of the pins. However, some of the other products, Omnitherm, uh, maybe Magnatherm products, you have to identify where those pins are, uh, put the pins in the correct position, and then get into the programming. And next, we'll, we'll see the navigation of the program. External, this is where energy management could come in um, and control modulation or staging of a boiler. Uh, and you have an input type. 
and you would choose what system are they using. Are they using a 0 to 10 volt DC signal or a 4 to 20? Okay? Uh, in this example, I chose 4 to 20. So that's your input type. Uh, I'll go back to 0 to 10 and back to control module and we can use external set points or firing rate. So that's up to your energy management uh, company of how they want to actually operate that boiler. Date and time we've already covered under quick start, miscellaneous, anti-short cycle, warm weather shutdown are also here under miscellaneous and I mentioned anti-short cycle time earlier so that's available here as well. Uh, again 60 seconds is what it's defaulted for. Um, warm weather shutdown you could get in and choose a value. I think I mentioned this earlier. Uh, hypothetically it's 72 degrees outside. If, some, if a demand came for a heat uh, zone to come on, if it's you know above 70 or 72 or whatever you choose, it will not allow the heating uh, system to operate until uh, you below that warm weather shutdown. Temperature units, this is where you can get in and choose Celsius or Fahrenheit, so whatever your needs are. And antifrost, so this is kind of unique. Antifrost protection is to protect the heat exchanger. Um, and you can use pumps and burners and in this example if we give it a set point it's defaulted for 40 degrees so we have an inlet sensor and an outlet sensor on the boiler uh, if those were to reach 40 degrees they would actually attempt to fire the boiler or or you can do pump in burner so you can disable the function you can do pumps only uh, so what does that mean that would allow the pumps to come on at least you're moving water through the heat exchanger so it would not freeze and pumps and burner means it would attempt to fire um, and at least turn the pumps on as well and you see so you have a set point again you have a hysteresis that's your differential uh, five off five on and pump control uh, we can now control boiler pump. We can also do domestic pump and we can also choose system pump. So if the heat exchanger reached 40 degrees we could turn on all the pumps here or again just the boiler pump only if needed. Now also um, showing a still screen here of miscellaneous and these are just some options depending on your boiler type. Uh, priorities that is, for example, you can get in and choose CH2 to be priority over CH1. Um, so there's options there. Down here, we're seeing trim, O2 trim. Now, this is only currently on our Magnatherm HTD and our Magnatherm Fire Tube. Uh, those two products have an O2 sensor. Some of the other products do not. So you won't see these icons uh, on every single boiler. And the isolation valve, again, same thing. Um, you won't have it on every boiler. That's available currently on the Magnatherm fire tube. So that's just some more images from miscellaneous. Please don't forget to go in and watch part five um, of this six part series. And again, all of this information is in the manual under document downloads uh, right off Lars.com. Thank you.